Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So welcome back to this mini series where I'm talking about signing messages on the Ethereum blockchain. Talking about, you know, signing messages. And in the last video, I showed you how you can create, you know, cryptographically signed messages and create a signature and how we can verify who actually signed that message. Um, so be sure to check out that previous video if you haven't already and also be sure to subscribe to this channel as well to see more videos about building blockchain technology. So in the last video we left off uh, looking at the source code for this project about how this sign message feature works right how we do this and I showed you that basically you know we can create um, a message fill it out here sign it with MetaMask broadcast it to the network okay Whenever we do that, you know, we get this, you know, hashed message here and we get a signature that comes back um, from the blockchain. And basically with these two puzzle pieces, the message and the signature, we can actually verify who sent it. And when I do that, I actually get the address uh, that I'm signed in with. You can see that here. So how does it do that? All right, that's the second part of the equation that we're going to go over in this video. You know, we went over this part already, but... Um, so check out that previous video if you haven't. But in this video, I'm going to show you how this part works. Okay. So in the last video, you know, we talked about um, this Web3 uh, ETH sign function, right? Where basically it takes an address, uh, some data, and a callback function. And we see this uh, signature that comes back. And now this signature can be broken down um, into three variables, right? R, S, and V that uh, correspond to, you know, uh, certain parts of the signature itself. And you'll notice that we can use these values on Ethereum with smart contracts to recover the person who signed it uh, with a function in Solidity called EC Recover. And we'll get to that just in just a second. All right, so... Um, Let's actually go into the project and we'll see uh, if you go to build contracts and go to verification. Um, this is uh, the verification contract that we're going to use and this is the function recover that we're going to use to actually generate the address of the person who signed it. And if you're familiar with the Open Zeppelin stuff, uh, this is basically uh, the same thing that comes out of their um, library for doing this. It's just slightly changed. Um, so credit to them for this pattern. I didn't come up with this myself. Um, but yeah, so I just want to show you how this works. All right, so inside this recover function, basically this is going to be a public function on our smart contract that accepts the hash, you know, the hashed message that we created in this previous uh, part, right? We create this message hash uh, right here from the value you put in. And we uh, got the signature, right, that came back from the blockchain, right? Here's our signature that comes back in the callback function, right? It's the signature, it's the result. And inside, you know, Solidity, we can send both of those values with the smart contract, um, and it's actually gonna break them down into, you know, bytes 32 strings, um, and then this, you know, unsigned integer V, okay? And it's going to make check to see it's there, and then it's going to actually do this in assembly. And this is why we need the blockchain to do this. So we can't do this natively inside of Solidity with EC recovery yet. This is the function down here. So we even have the note here that we want to do, actually. This is how we divide the signature uh, like this, right? So if you'll see, you know, the Web3 documentation says you need to do this, right? Here's the signature R, S, and V. Well, this is what's doing here in, in uh, inside the smart contract, okay? And then, basically, if um, if it works, uh, then we're going to use this EC recover function. And this is sort of the secret sauce. This is how uh, Solidity does this. It takes the hash of the message and then these three variables, V, R, and S, and it actually recovers... Um, the uh, value of the person who signed it. And if you want to read more about how this works, you know, we can look at elliptic curve cryptography. Um, it's pretty complex stuff. I don't necessarily even understand all the math behind this, um, but essentially what it does, it's, it's um, a unique kind of like thing that the blockchain does in order to recover who did this, okay? All right, so that's the smart contract with the function that allows us to recover this, right? So we'll go back to our JavaScript app. Whenever we click verify, basically we're just going to take the signature that we stored here 
uh, and the message, like we stored these in the app. Here's the app message. Here's the app signature, okay? And we're going to call the recover, recover function on our contract, right? Whenever it comes back, we're going to get the result. And the result of that function is going to be the address of the person who signed it, right? So we're going to do that and we're going to paste it here. So I'll refresh this. We'll say hello world, right? Click sign and send. Open MetaMask, sign. Okay, message signed. Let's verify it. This is the feature we're working on now, right? I click verify. This account signed this message. Boom, there it goes. All right. Okay, so here's a, this is a basic example of how this works and how you can do this in Solidity and how you can do it in Adapt. And this is really just a test. This is just a way to show you how to do it. But how does a real DAP do this, right? Now, we talked about how Ether Delta implements this in the previous video, right? Basically, you deposit funds into the smart contract. Um, you create a buy order that gets stored in a database somewhere. Um, and whenever you create the buy order, you sign a message that says you want to make this trade. And then whenever somebody goes trying to fulfill it, um, we... It tries to do the trade in the smart contract here directly, and it checks to see that you are actually intended to make that trade yourself. So let's actually walk through some of the code that shows you how that works, okay? So I've actually got the Ether Delta smart contract here. Um, this isn't in the project from GitHub, just to let you know, but I just pulled this from uh, the web and have put in my text editor so you can see this, right? So it's a big smart contract, right? You can see the... Uh, um, Let's see here, Ether Delta, right? But if you go down to this trade function, essentially what happens is, you know, someone's calling this trade function whenever they go, you know, you can click here to buy in the order book and they want to make a trade, right? But I only, you know, in order to even get in this order book, I have to designate my intent to trade. And I do this by, you know, signing a message, okay? Whenever I do that, it takes like the token I want to buy, the price, you know, the token that, uh, you know, whatever currency I s deposited and want to trade from. And it takes all those values together and ha makes a hash, right? And that becomes the message that we sign to the network, okay? And when someone comes here and makes a trade, basically what it does from the server, we pass in those values. We pass in the, to the you know, the token that we wanted to uh get, you know, the amount, you know, all this stuff we filled in, right? Yada, yada, yada. And then look at this. You got V, R, and S, right? You got the components of the actual signature itself, right? This stuff we talked about here in with Web3. And it actually takes those values and it says, hey, you know, we hash the values of our order, right? And turn that into a message hash, and we use the EC recover function to say, hey, did this person actually intend to make this trade, right? Does this signed message actually equal this user on the network, right? And these are all secrets. And if it does, then execute this trade. And if not, stop execution. It's basically a way of saying we can only make this trade if this person has authorized it. And... We know they've authorized it if they've signed the message on the network because the smart contract's operating on the network and it's aware of the message that was signed and can use this EC recover function to verify that that person wanted to make this trade. So that is a very good example of how you can actually use message signatures in a real world way in your blockchain dApp to build a really cool real world use case that will, you know, kind of allow you to leverage the full power of the blockchain and create um, something, you know, really awesome. So I hope you all found that helpful. Again, you can uh, get the code to this project on my GitHub ever at github.com forward slash DAP University forward slash EC Recover. And again, you can read more on, you know, public key cryptography, uh, you know, asymmetric cryptography, you know, elliptic curve cryptography, which is, you know, the, the basis for uh, this EC recover function, right, in Solidity. Seeing so, you know, it stands for uh, elliptic curve. Sorry, I'm trying to find it right here. And you can read more about, you know, Web3 and how it, you know, it breaks these values down into RS and V for the signature and how those are the components we need. 
And again, you can see all this happening inside this verification smart contract in the project where we're passing in just the hash and the signature. And then it actually breaks the RSV values down on the blockchain. So it, there's a few different ways you can do this. And now you've got some good examples and some real world use cases to figure this out. So again, I hope you all found that helpful. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.